Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Radio General. This is episode number five in our Let's Play series of this new war game uh, that allows you to play through World War II as a commander of Canadian soldiers. Uh, we have fought the first three battles in the Sicilian campaign as well as two tutorial fights, and in today's episode we're going to be fighting uh, the invasion of Italy itself. So the beginning of the invasion of Italy, the Battle of Ortano. I'm, I think I'm mispronouncing that. But apparently it was a pretty famous engagement of Canadian forces on the Italian peninsula. A very bloody battle that had the nickname of the Stalingrad of Italy or something to that effect. Uh, and uh, it'll be an interesting fight. Uh, this was taken from a live stream from my channel from just a couple of days ago, uh, from my Twitch uh, channel just a couple of days ago. We had a great time. There were uh, a good number of people out there, uh, especially, you know, for Twitch. I do, I do better on YouTube, but uh, a good number of people out there, and I had a really uh, enjoyable time playing this game, and I hope you guys have an enjoyable time watching me play it. But with that being said, that's enough sort of preamble. Let's just jump back into the stream, and I hope you guys enjoy. Didn't Operation Husky also include landings like south of Naples? Um, and then was Avalanche the landings? Or maybe that was Avalanche. I can't remember. Um, but I thought Husky was more than just Sicily. In any event, you can see here there's going to be landings on the southern tip of Italy. You can see these sort of uh, different arrows representing where landings occurred and then a large number of allied landings up here just southeast of Naples. This battle is going to be beyond this initial uh, front line. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny if the developers were just like, hey, we put a 45 minute video in there. Um, so the casualty report does carry over. Is that 151 KIA total, like in my entire history? That's all? Yeah, I guess I, I guess 80 was by far my, my highest KIA total. In any event. Um, unit management, do the units start over with a new campaign? No, they don't. So they stay at what they were. Oh, shoot. Real quick, want to go back to unit management. All right, so some of the units that fought in the last battle can move their experience perk up here. So for the artillery, for example, we can get this little plus symbol, which means we can either give them a trajectory correction, which gives a plus 10% to barrage damage, or we can go with a creeping barrage, which is a plus 25% barrage radius. Hits your unit too. So this increases the radius of the artillery fire. This increases the damage. I think I'm pretty accurate, so we're going to go with the barrage damage here. For the first field company engineers... I don't know what the engineer perks are. You can see it's either track and field, gives them movement speed, combat damage, cover training, or improved metal detectors, 30% plus mine clearing speed. We'll go with that for engineers. I think that's an important trait there. Um, the other engineers will probably also give the same trait. Then we'll go to these tanks that we just used in the last battle here. Um, armor, or they get plus 15 defense. 15 damage, and additional sight radius. Mm, let's go with the sight radius. Those guys had really short sighting radiuses before, so now they're up to 1.2 kilometers. Uh, meanwhile, the Royal Canadian Regiment here. Infantry. Oh, 40 troops. Jeez, they're at 40% strength. So they've already unlocked one award. They're actually level 3 chevrons, so we're into the second tier of awards here. So the first one we did was plus 15 damage. We can now either do plus 20% defense in landmarks. We can do plus 0.4 kilometer sighting distance, or we can do uh, increase attack range. Attack range is one kilometer. I think I'd rather go with the defense in landmarks. Like once you actually take the objective, I don't want to be ejected from there. So we'll do that. And I think those are the only other ones that unlocked a new tier of awards. So we'll go back. <laughs> you don't need more mine, mine clearing. You just need more people in Baker Company. I mean, that might be true. All right, so the Battle of Ortana. A number of fortress towns must be captured. Linking these towns are windy, dusty roads littered with minefields. Didn't we just... Oh, wait, no, that, that's Leon Fort. Never mind. Why was that still on the screen? The Battle of Ortana, the ruined city of Ortana... Uh, dubbed Little Stalingrad, oh, that's encouraging, <laughs> has become a fortress. Rubble, machine guns, and snipers create deadly kill zones. The enemy must be isolated and take it. Shit. <laughs> Little Stalingrad, really? That'll be fun. Oh. 
Ortona? Ortona? Okay. Welcome to Ortona. Location, Eastern Italy, Adriatic Coast. Features an Aragon Castle, Basilica of St. Thomas the Apostle, deep water port and beaches. Oh, I'm sure my soldiers are really excited about the beaches. Locate, located at a strategic point on the Adriatic coast, it features a deep water port allowing it to act as a base for heavy wartime ships. It has two important historic structures, the Basilica of St. Thomas the Apostle, which houses several of his relics, and Aragon Castle, a massive defensive structure. After... After? Question mark. Aragon Castle then functioned, functioning as a workshop and powder storage, was heavily damaged when it when hit repeatedly by bombs and grenades from both sides, causing the structure to explode and rain rubble everywhere. Oh, rip. Uh, infantryman of the 48th Highlanders of Canada dealing with a German counterattack. That looks like a trailer park. <laughs> Where are they... Um, okay. There's a hole on a wall. Radio men by what looks like an agave that has its side shaved off. Interesting. And combat medics. Okay. Let's watch another video, guys, before we get started. Skiing party? What's with... All of these videos are like... Hey guys, the war is a vacation. No actual fighting required. When two outposts of a British recce unit got snowbound in a rugged mountain position on the Adriatic front, British Corps headquarters sent out an urgent call for a ski party to carry food and medical supplies to the stranded men. A Canadian armored unit volunteered to leave their tanks and take the skis. The first lap of the rescue is made in trucks and jeeps to a town in the foothills. Rear base is reached in the afternoon and the men are completely outfitted with ski equipment. Yes, they still have ski toggery in Italian shops. The men hardly have time to fit and wax their skis before they're off again. in the Apennine Mountains isn't much like the Laurentians or the Canadian Rockies, but the tankmen enjoy finding their ski legs again. The rescue parties are warmly received by the men of the recce unit, and things aren't as grim as first believed. Canadians relieve a 75% food shortage and get in a lot of skiing on the side. Everything's hunky-dory, boys. We're ready. All right, let's move forward to this battle. Okay, so we get one, we get two, three, four infantry. Oh, by the way, we have scouts now. So there's two scout units. Um, this 14th Hussars and the 4th Princess Louis Dragoon, Dragoon G Guard Scouts. Okay. Um, so speed's the same, morale's the same, defense is better for the 14th Hussars. Damage is better for the Hussars. Attack range is longer for the Princess Louis. Sight range is better for the Princess Louis. I still would prefer that damage and defense. So we're going to go with the 14th Hussars for scouts. Um, and then for the rest of our troops, no tanks this time, unfortunately. But we do have some anti-tank guns. We only get one anti-tank gun unit, though. Um, so I guess the stats don't matter. Okay. So now I want to avoid the understrength units because, like, these guys are 70 men and 40 men and they're exhausted and they're understrength and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll go with the first group I think should... Bleh, I don't know. 
be interesting if I could make scouts infantry, but apparently I can't. So... We're gonna be on the offensive, right? All these guys have the, the attack bonus here. I'm going to add those superstitious soldiers. Actually, we'll pull them back. Uh, the Royal Regina, I want them to be my reserves. I don't know if there's like a cost to calling reserves in or not. I really don't get the sense that there is. Ah. Hello, fellow human. All right. Um, let's go ahead and let's read this here. So we've already picked our soldiers, but you can see the intel report. There's a battalion of Falsham Jaegers, snipers, artillery, and anti-tank guns. Oh, that's fucking great. Ortona, or I can't remember how you said I was supposed to pronounce it, will be heavily defended. There are reports of enemy snipers ro roving the surrounding countryside. Additionally, there is an enemy artillery battery outside the city that may be vulnerable. Okay. Use scouts to destroy snipers. Move around Ortona. Uh, and capture Torie Mushia to cut off the enemy's retreat later. Taking Ortonia will be difficult until naval artillery arrives. Your anti-tank guns can bombard enemy positions. Uh, this is uh, Radio General. There are no mods. This is just the default game. So it looks like what we may want to do then is we may want to drive north. So here's the actual map. There's two objectives within the town that we need to take. There's also a hill, I'm guessing, that might be an objective. But we probably want to drive north of this river into the heights near Sun San Leonardo. Take location one, and then potentially move someone north to location two uh, to take that location, and then drive in on the city once we've got it kind of surrounded from three sides. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't played this battle before. I don't know. I see, like, I don't see why I wouldn't always deploy my in my reserves right away. Alright, so I'm gonna have, before we get started, I'm gonna have a scout and two infantry units. So I'm gonna push the scout and infantry units north to location one, or whatever that location is. I can't really see. Again, it drives me mad that they've got this camera angle. I know I can use W whatever keys, but like, Really? Let me look down. Give me a top-down view. It's very frustrating, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these troops west across the bridge. Take location one. Hopefully we can take it before... Why are these counting down? We haven't even started the battle yet. Hopefully we can take this town before the reinforcements show up, and then we can move east, scout out the enemy, use the anti-tank guns to bombard enemy positions. I'm guessing the enemy artillery is on location four. Uh, the objectives for this are hold Ortana and old town, uh, hold Ortana and new town. So actually the only objectives are these two objectives here in the city itself. Still, if we take this location, it allows us to flank so we can attack from the south and from the west at the same time. Um, meanwhile, minus one for every axis unit that reaches Torie and Mutsia. So actually we get penalties if the enemy reaches Turi and Muchina in the north. So we might that might incentivize us to move one unit north and take that as a blocking force. Alright, with that being said, let's go ahead and play. Alright, so which one's the scouts here? I can't really see. Fox. Fox, move to location one. So we'll let Fox Hawks move out. Abel, move to Echo 11. Abel, Hawks, 
Got him, nice. Fox, move to Echo 11. Fox, move to Echo 11. George, move to Echo 11. Fox, report status. Able, report status. Fox report status. Nice. Okay. Fox report status. Able, move to location one. George, move to location one. Interesting. So apparently Baker is a larger unit. It's an infantry company. Shit. They're bombarding the fucking town. Abel, retreat. George, retreat. Fox, report status. Abel, move to location one. George, report status. We've assembled at We are at Echo 11. We've suffered moderate casualties. Abel, you're throwing I'm not dying for King and Country! George, report status. George, we are at Echo. George, move to location one. God damn it. I need frickin' artillery, is what I need. Baker, move to Lima 12. Wait, why are you up above north above the bridge? I need to assault this town on the left. George, report status. Charlie, fire barrage at location one. Baker, move to Lima 10. Charlie, report status. You fucking cowards. You have two companies and, and freaking scouts. Fox, report status. Fox, move to Hotel 10. I need a better visual on what, what's all out here. Dog, move to Foxtrot 10. George, report status. Able, report status. Fox report status. Fox move to India 9. I don't want to push him out of the town quite yet. Seriously? There's nothing? You don't see anything? Move to Fox. Move to India 8. Dog report status. 
Abel, move to Charlie 10. George, move to Delta 9. Alright, I'm going to try and flank these guys a little bit. Hopefully without enemy artillery fire taking us out. Fox, move to Hotel 7. Slowly working my way north. Dog, move to location 1. Dog, move to location 1. George, report status. Abel, report status. Abel, move to Charlie 7. Fucking dang. Where is this artillery coming from? Dog, report status. Fox, move to lo Echo 6. All right, Grand, Echo 6. I guess these scouts might be able to move in behind him and flank him from the rear. They're the only ones that seem to be able to move without being pinned down by enemy soldiers. Charlie, move to Kilo 11. Or, sorry, Charlie, move to Juliet 11. What did he say? Fox, move to location one. Really? From what? Bear, move to location one. Oh, shit. Baker, cancel. Halt. Baker, hold position. George, move to location one. Fox, move to location two. Able report status. Able move to location two. Charlie, fire barrage at Hotel Three. Charlie, move to location one. Dog report status. Fox report status. Fox dig in. Fox dig in. Fox dig in. Oh, apparently scouts can't dig in. Fox move to location three. Fox move to hotel three. Able report status. Able move to hotel three. Able here, hotel three. It is. Still have 16 minutes left. We've got naval gunfire coming on board in four and a half minutes. Charlie report status. Charlie here. We're at Juliet 8. We're headed to San Leonardo. Charlie, move to Juliet 8. Charlie, move to location 4. Baker, move to Juliet 8. Sorry, Baker, move to hotel... Baker, move to location 4. Alright, so we're gonna attempt to leverage those heights. Dog, move to... Hotel 7. Able report status. Fox report status. Dog, move to Hotel 3. How are they have the upper hand? We've got infantry attacking enemy artillery. Okay. 
Fox, move to Hotel 3. Abel, move to Location 2. Dog, report status. I don't know. Shit. I thought I just destroyed the enemy artillery. Fox, move to Hotel 6. Baker, move to Location 3. Dog, report status. Baker report status. Charlie, fire barrage at location three. Pound those fuckers. Good. Charlie, fire barrage at location five. Fox report status. Baker report status. George move to location three. I doubt it, but go for it, George. Dog report status. Damn it. Where is this enemy artillery? Abel, report status. Abel here. We are at Ore Mutia. We suffered moderate casualties. Where is this enemy artillery fire from? Charlie, fire barrage at location three. Charlie here. Artillery firing at Weba. Seven. One. Barrage is remaining. Lemus. Okay, so I think. George, move to location three. George, dig in. Baker, move to Lima 5. Baker, proxy, everyone. Heading to Ortona Old Town. Dog, report status. Dog, here. We're at Hotel 3. Dog, move to location 5. Dog, here. You can count on us to capture Ortona Old Town. Fox, report status. Fox, here. We're at Hotel 3. We've got a few wounded, but nothing. Fox, move to location 5. Charlie, fire barrage at location 5. Charlie here. Raining thunder down on Zero. Four. Baker. Baker, report status. Starting mouthful. We are moving from the building to the building. We're in game. Yeah, that's the thing. Dog. Charlie here. The apartment was on target. God damn it. I need the fucking naval gunfire support. I thought they were coming online soon. What happened to that art- where did they go? Charlie- Charlie, fire barrage at location 5. Charlie here. No can do. We're completely out of shell. Shit. George, move to location 5. Easy, fire barrage at location five. Easy here. Roger, comet tells on zero. Four. Easy here. Out the hit. Leave those coordinates coming. 
Charlie, report status. Charlie here. You're at Hill. That's great. George, report status. George, move to location three. Dog, report status. Fox, report status. Baker, report status. Baker, we're at Marcona Old Town. Got a few wounded, but nothing serious. Easy, fire barrage at Hotel 5. Easy, no, no, Easy cancel barrage. Easy, fire barrage at India 5. Dog, dig in. Shit. George, report status. Baker, move to location three. How'd they move in behind me? Dog, move to location five. Easy, fire barrage at Mike seven. This is danger close, boys. How are these guys? Baker report status. Easy fire barrage at Mike 8. Just beyond the town, I'm hoping this is going to hit them in the. Baker dig in. Okay, so we drove Eagle off. We've got six minutes left to hold. Someone's shooting at someone. Charlie. Charlie, report status. Easy, fire barrage at India 8. Drive that battalion off. Come on, naval gunfire support, I need ya. George, move to location four. Get up on that hill. I think Charlie's completely out of barrages. We'll see how this plays out. Dog report status. Dog, we're at Portana, Old Town. Fox report status. Off here, we're at Hotel Two. Taking minor casualties. Fox, move to location two. Off here, George. Easy fire barrage at India Eight. Easy here. Morning, confirmed. Come on, fire hit him again. Hit him again. How many artillery barrages do they have to take? Easy, fire barrage at India 8. George, report status. Easy fire barrage at India 8. Easy here. Roger. 
This is an enemy battalion, so they obviously have multiple companies. I think they said three or four, whereas George is an individual company. But if we keep hitting them with naval gunfire, my hope is they eventually retreat. And it sounds like it did work there. So we've got a battalion dug in at both... Uh, Baker, move to Lima 7. Baker, dig in. George, report status. And these are trying to leave the battlefield. You lose objective points for each enemy that escapes. Seriously? But I thought I'd just have to prevent them from leaving up here. If they retreat to the south, I don't care. Whoa, shit. Oh my god. Baker report status. Easy fire barrage at India 8. I don't know, maybe these guys are coming back in for more. Charlie, report status. Easy, fire barrage at Mike 9. Maybe 9 or 8, I can't really tell. It's right on the edge. Baker, report status. Easy fire barrage at Lima 8. Easy here. Raining thunder down on Lima 8. Easy here. We've completely destroyed an enemy company. Nice. Easy here. Yeah! That was a direct hit. All right. So we've seen a infantry battalion of Dingo. We've seen a company bear. We've seen anti-aircraft guns, Falcon, and artillery cheetah. This could also be uh, anti-tank guns. So two enemy companies, one enemy battalion, and then an anti-tank and artillery unit is what we've seen so far. I think that's what... I think that's the end. India 8 is Moonland now? Yeah, I mean... Un uh, you know, when you've got unlim... You've got an a ship with a lot of artillery on board. I don't think it's likely that we would burn through that. Nice. All right, victory, boys. Victory. Um, so three infantry units. An artillery and anti tank gun. One. Oh, fuck. I forgot about the snipers. Victory. Ten objective points. No enemy units reached the exit point. We deployed 1,100 men. We took 236 casualties, so actually 21%. That's less than our last battle. 42 KIA is about half of our last battle. 41 missing in action, slightly higher than our last battle. 153 wounded. Total of 442,938 rounds. Abel is under strength. She took 40% casualties. But Baker, only 19%. Charlie, 25%. Dog took just 4%. Easy, the, our, the uh, naval gun, HMS C Saskatchewan, uh, suffered no casualties and fired um, damage dealt 222.7. That puts it number two amongst all the other, actually number three amongst the units. George, the Royal Regina Rifles, 226, and Baker, the Highland Infantry, 261. Charlie, the anti-tank guns, didn't do a great job, only 50 damage dealt. But 25% uh, casualties there, dog 4%. Super efficient damage to casualties lost. Uh, Fox, the snipers, uh, or the scouts did their job. And George, the Royal Regina Rifles, uh, severely under strength. Nine, am I reading that right? 92% casualties. Oh my God, George. Meanwhile, the enemy was completely wiped out. 
They deployed 680 men. They lost 680 men. 325 KIA, 58 or 50, 89. God, not 50. 89 MIA and 226 wounded. We wiped him out. <laughs> Anti-tank guns, snipers, everybody. They're all dead, George. Yeah, sorry, George. Um, you're almost all dead too. But hey, victory. Outstanding. All objectives are achieved and your troops will be written up for commendation. Actually, I should probably pick a unit. So, George, for the eight survivors, you are all going to get medals. <laughs> all right, moving on. No, I need to write letters. I can't spell for shit. I need I need uh, spell correct. But hey, you know, I am an inept commander, and your son died under my command. I mean, that's basically what I'm saying here, uh, uh, Newhauser. I'm sure this will make his wife feel better. Hey, I am the important honesty is the. Oh wait, he's not even dead. He's missing an action at the Battle of Leonfort. So this is actually the previous battle. Um. Is that better? No, I don't want to write more letters. <laughs> uh, all right. No, I just put F. You just get a telegram in the letter from General Butcher, and it just says F. Uh, Mouse Holing, December 20th, 1943. Ortona was selected for its... I keep saying it differently every time. Was selected for its strategic location as a deep water port. With access to the Allied forces... Uh, with, with access, the Allied forces could shorten their supply lines and pressure the interior of Europe. Three regiments of Canadian troops battled a regiment of German paratroopers in hard-fought house-to-house fighting. In order to maintain safe cover, Canadians blasted holes in walls of structures in their effort to fight house-to-house. -house. Termed mouse-holding, uh, the battle was politicized, so both sides fought hard to give, very little uh, as, to give very little as national reputation were at stake. Knocked out German P, Z, K, and whatever. Examining a disabled tank. Molson, Dieppe. Why are we looking at Dieppe propaganda now? This makes the Canadians look like they were in much better shape at Dieppe than perhaps historically was the case. Wait, is that Molson? Like Molson Coors? Uh, Canadian Army tanks and infantry advanced through the streets of Ortana, Italy, during the final stages of the fighting in the coastal town. We got some nice Sherman tanks there. Sorting mail for personnel. More mail, I think. War! Canadian orientation films. Let's take a look and see what the... Oh, wait. No horses, so we went by train. <laughs> what am I looking at? This is kind of cool. Like, if I wanted to stop and read through it all, but I'm probably not going to do that on stream. Holy crap! There's a lot of detail here. I'm kind of interested that they would choose a Adriatic coast town. You would think that would be a location that would be more susceptible to, like, German air raids or German interference or something from the, uh, from the Baltic coast. All right. Man, it could be a deserter. You're right, Micro Effect. Maybe I should have called him a deserter. 
All right, Bells Toll in Ortana. Let's watch this one. This might be a little bit long, but I'm curious to see how this uh, how this tells. German Luftwaffe in 43? The German Luftwaffe was not gone in 43, Neuhauser. Maybe, certainly not in Germany. Maybe in Italy. I don't know. All right. The Bells Toll. This is Peter Sturzberg of the CBC reporting from the Italian front. For the dead of Ortona, the bell of its cathedral, the cathedral of St. Thomas the Apostle tolls. For the Canadians who died in taking the town, for the Germans who fell defending it. And for the dust and ashes of the cathedral itself, the bell tolls. For the living as well, the bell tolls, calling them to prayer. The priest, Don Pietro di Fulvio, has fixed up the sacristy as a chapel. And now, between the rows of white cupboards where the holy vestments were kept, there is an escape from the world outside, from the regular enemy shelling that is continuing to bring death to Ortona. On December the 21st last year, which happened to be the Feast of St. Thomas, the Germans mined and blew up the cathedral not because of the legend, but because the clock tower might serve as an observation post. A single bell calls the people to the little chapel in the sacristy, which is all that remains of the cathedral. They don't toll them often, because the vibration shakes loose the bricks in the battered belfry. But here they are tolling now for the other St. Thomas. That guy's so dead. And that dead deaf. Oh man. That was that was painful to listen to. The audio mixing was terrible too. The uh, the announcer was nearly blurted out. But the Gustav line will be a battle that we fight next time. I hope you guys are enjoying this video series as we look at Radio General, a new game out on Steam uh, that allows you to play through World War II as a commander of Canadian soldiers with voice commands and without actually seeing your soldiers. It's a really sort of a unique concept in a game that I'm really enjoying. Um, we've just won the Battle of Ortana, uh, and we will be moving on to the assault on the Gustav line next time. But until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.